we know this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or a sister in need and yet refuses to help? Those are strong words that we hear in the first letter from John. Strong words about what it is at the core of how we emulate our lives based on the life of Jesus. Today is Good Shepherd Sunday, and so we have the reading in John's Gospel of the Good Shepherd when Jesus identifies himself as that. And also, we have this little piece from 1 John. Most of us probably don't know real shepherds. In fact, most of us only experience sheep at the petting zoos. Sheep are really unwielding. They're not the tame ones that we see that have been taught to be docile and just want a little piece of food. Rather, they can be quite difficult. They can get caught up in thickets. They can wander away. They all have wills of their own. We sort of have this thing in our culture where we think of sheep as being weak and, and ineffectual and, and, and simplistic. But if you spend any time around herds of sheep, large ones, you find that they are quite challenging to care for. The audience, the people that both John would have been writing to and also that Jesus would have been speaking to, knew everything they could possibly know about herding sheep and caring for them. And when Jesus uses this metaphor that I am the good shepherd and then gives the example, he says, you know, the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand doesn't care. And Jesus is trying to get at the sincerity of our hearts in terms of what we do for others around us. And he's saying that he is willing to lay down his own life for us, for you and for me, and to lead us and to guide us into safety and into God's kingdom. And maybe we lose sight of that, but I know that so much of Jesus' teaching is so clear about love of neighbor, love of each other, of creating a world that can be very different and very kind and very joyful. But what does it mean to emulate that in our own life? And what did John mean when he wrote this letter? Why does it sound so harsh? Probably the people that John is writing to are just figuring out what it means to care for each other. Remember that the early church was made up of a mix of both Greeks and Jews and others, and they didn't share the same culture and expectations and understandings and how one would reach out and care for others was still in its development. And so when John writes this and he says, you know, it's not about having all the things in life. It's about how you serve and what you do for others. That's the critical piece, that little bit of scripture there about how we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God love abide in anyone who is filled with the world's ideas and goods, but sees a brother and sister in need and yet refuses to help? That's a core call for all of us as disciples to be willing to walk along others in the world that we see and to offer them help and assistance. That's a challenge. Think for a minute the people that you know in your life that might need your help. Think for a minute about people in the world that you might be able to take and share from your bounty and be a shepherd to or to help. There's another image in the Gospels when we hear Jesus using the same idea that there is, you know, the sheep are many and the shepherd says, you know, there's 99 that are here and one is run off and and why is that one more important than the 99, right? 
And in the gospel and in the lesson for that, it is that the shepherd runs out after the one because that one is just as important as the rest. And in some ways, that's really turning some things upside down, right? I bet if we were to be really honest, most of us, if we knew we could protect 99 things and we lost one, probably wouldn't pay too much to the one that is lost. But that's not how things work in Jesus' economy. Who are the lost? Who are those who are wandering around unseen? Who are those who are not in safety or who are in danger? It could be an immigrant. It could be a person with a color of skin that's not the same as your own. It could be someone who's hungry or a child who has no parents. It could be someone who's lost in a life of addiction and drugs and alcohol. It could be someone who's lost in anger and temper. It could be someone who is so caught up in their own mental illness that they're unable to see how they might be harming themselves or others. The list can go on and on of the lost of the sheep that have wandered off, of the sheep that are in danger. So what does that mean for us as a disciple? Part of it is we can't all each take on the entire world's problems by ourselves. But it might be that we're willing to take a risk. And it might mean that we can help one other person. I remember a number of years ago hearing Becca Stevens, who we had as a Lenten speaker, talking to a group of clergy who were in the middle of a very erudite conversation about mission and and, and ministry and reaching out to those outside the world. And I remember her saying, and it stayed with me my entire ministry, this was almost 20 years ago when this conversation was taking place. And she says, what if the goal is just to help one person at a time? And I think in some ways that's a mantra that lets all of us enter this challenging scripture, but also this way of being a disciple more clearly. What if we each reached out and from our gifts and skills and all the things that the world has provided to us, take and use that to help just one other person? Maybe that's a challenge for the next week or two or longer. But to me, that's what's at the core of these scriptures for today. Here's a more challenging question. What if we're the lost? What if we're the ones that need to be open and receptive to the good shepherds in our life? There might be some among us might be me, it might be you, it might be all of us. You see, that's where I think the vulnerability is sometimes missed in the scripture. It isn't that we're called just to help others as if we're more superior or better or stronger or have it all figured out, but we're to help each other. And we're to be vulnerable and willing to be led by others but also willing to lead others into that same gospel truth of health and life and wholeness. So who are the shepherds in your life? And who are you called to be shepherds to? Amen.